stiff arm to crack. <laughs> Great good match right there. Fighting through contact, fighting through offensive line, being a double team, multiple moves stacked into one. Just a play of pure domination. This is actual film, it's actual football talk. It's a football show, it's about football, not storylines. And you are listening to the 31st edition of Blue It Splits. Um, today, we're going to be doing a, a 28 plays, I believe, on uh, Lawrence Cager, um, the Jets undrafted rookie, one of the rookies that got one of the most hypes, uh, or the most, most hypes, the most hype of the undrafted class. I would say him and Huff got the most, um, along, with, uh, along with Jackson, who I don't think is a guy who's going to make the team. Uh, Guidry's making some noise now. Wasn't much on him available. I actually think there was, but I'm not going to do him. Uh, we'll see if he makes a team. If so, then we'll just see throughout the season. Uh, Huff, we already did. Um, so Cager is the guy that I decided to do along with Huff in terms of the undrafted guys. Uh, so we have about 28 plays of him. Um, and then after that, we got Wilson coming up. I already have him recorded. And these are all YouTube exclusives, by the way. So if you're going to try to look for these in article form, uh, just for the sake of getting these reviews out, I'm just making them on YouTube. So Cager's YouTube exclusive, Wilson, uh, Hogan, I'm going to start working on, uh, Gore. Um, those are the, those, including this one, those are the four guys. Or let's just say that those three guys are the ones you're getting after this guaranteed. Uh, if the Jets were to sign a receiver, depending on the time they sign them out, I'll try to get them out, but you're getting at least these four more shows, uh, three more reviews after this one. And then, like I said, early September, uh, keep your eyes peeled. I'm going to announce on the show the exact date and time. I'm going to do a YouTube live stream. I want people to set their clocks, whatever, if they have time, uh, check out this stream live. And then when you're on your YouTube account on that live stream, uh, you're going to be able to comment to us. It's me, me and Kyle doing 53-man roster predictions and just answering any questions. So uh, any questions that you guys tweet us, or, or not, uh, not tweet us, but if you guys are in the chat uh, and you're saying something, we'll react to it. We'll talk about it. Uh, so that'd be a fun way to interact. And then we'll also have a phone number. So if you want to call in, uh, talk for a couple minutes. Like I said, I used to talk to people all the time uh, with Jet Nation Radio. Um, but because I went more film centric and it was really dedicated to film, I didn't do really do a lot of call in shows. So I tried to do one or two a year just to hear from you guys. So if you guys can call in, that'd be great. The other housekeeping again, uh, during the season, just like last season, if you've been watching this show for a while or listening to the show for a while, I'm going to be doing pickums. So if I get at least four five, six people who are interested, um, and, and you listen to the show and you're a dedicated listener and you listen every single week or watch every single week, uh, if I get a couple people to do it. Like I said, me and Marcus are going to pick five or six games. I'm going to, at the end of the 10 minutes of every show, 10-ish minutes, five minutes, five to 10 minutes of the show, I'm going to be um, saying games, okay? Atlanta versus the Rams and the Jets versus this team and this team versus this team and pick your winners and losers. If you beat both Marcus and I, uh, two free shirts, obviously a shout out, um, you know, something else I'll figure out. Maybe I'll give you, a, if you, if you go to tailgates, I'll give you a free tailgate at my tailgate, which is always fun uh, next year. Um, give you a free year subscription, a couple of, you know, things like that. That'll be pretty fun. Um, and then towards the end of the year, let's say if you're down, I'll buy a lot of games. I'll start tying in some spreads into it. So, okay, you have to pick the team uh, with the spreads. So, okay, it's the, it's the, whatever, it's the Raiders versus the Rams and the Rams are plus six six point five. Okay, you know, so you I need to pick that. And if the Rams don't win by uh, seven points, then you don't get that win. You know, uh, those would count for two. You know, stupid stuff like that will do. So that, that'll be fun. Um, other than that, there's really not much I can think about. Oh, if you are interested in, in the pick them thing, that's what I'm going to say, what I'm continuing on with, either tweet at me, DM me, or email me at uh, Joe period blew it. J O E period blew it, B L E W E T T at Jets X Factor. J E T S X factor.com. And just let me know if you're interested. Um, like I said, I think it'd be a fun thing to do to get, to, uh, to get you guys involved. Uh, other than that, definitely leave the podcast reviews. Like I said, the, the more reviews we get, uh, the ratings, the more likes we get on YouTube, the more subscriptions, the more people we get out to, the more people we get out to, the more money the site makes. Let's be completely transparent here. Uh, the more uh, money I get, the more upgrades I could do to the show, whether that be um, 
obviously putting more work into this. I already put a lot more into a lot into it, but putting more work into it, getting guests, upgrading equipment, upgrading visuals, upgrading the microphone if that needs to be upgraded, just maintaining my laptop, which has thousands and thousands of plays on it. Uh, so it does a lot of things. So if you guys can do that, and it, and it means a lot, you know, obviously doing all this work, if you guys just send a review of a, a sentence, you know, it, it definitely uh, keeps you motivated. So I'd appreciate that. Other than that, I don't think there's really much. Oh, Jets X, Jets X Shop, or Jets, uh, what is it? I forget. I think it's Jet, Jet X Shop. But if you go just go to Jets X Factor and find the shop, whatever, but you know, it's a different website. But um, some, some, some cool, you know, stuff. I, I, I like it, especially because I'm a part of it. But let's get into Cager. A lot of these shows coming up with, with Cager, um, with Wilson and with Gore, I'm going to make them a little bit shorter. You know, you guys have seen my reviews that are 50 plays, 70 plays. I've done reviews of Donald at like 120 plays, which is still on YouTube. Um, they're not going to be that long because I know people's attention span for these, these lesser guys are going to be a little bit less or a little bit lacking. So nowhere over an hour, you know, 45 minutes ish each show. I'll run to the plays pretty quickly just because I say uh, I don't want to keep you guys for too long. And I just want to make it more of a quick hitter on these guys just to get a good feel of, of these guys. Um, because like I said, it's, it's not like we're reviewing, you know, our number one corner or number one middle linebacker or anything like that, or Quinn Williams. It's not like that. So for the strengths and weaknesses, again, a lot of this stuff, I'm running through it the first time with you guys. Uh, typically when I do a show, I usually put them all up on jets X factor. So I have a decent idea of what I'm watching. Uh, these plays I'm about to watch is literally the first time I'm watching them since I recorded them. So uh, some of the plays I need to watch a couple of times, but we'll, we'll go through it. That's usually what happens anyway. Even if I put up on Jets X Factor, I can't remember 50 plays in a row. Uh, the strengths and weaknesses, even these lists are not properly laid out. So it's kind of just my rough notes. Uh, the strengths I have listed for Lawrence Gager uh, goes up and gets balls, extends to the ball, body control, 50-50 ball winner, uh, size frame, and obviously him being 6'5", 220. That's the size and frame I'm talking about. Uh, physical and stems, long speed is decent. Uh, once he gets going, strength plays tough, will block and run game, even though sometimes it's lacking a little bit to me uh, in terms of his effort. Uh, alters route speed, which I put question marks by. So something I didn't see a ton, but I saw a little bit. Attacks ball, uh, which is the same ex as it extends the ball. Like I said, this is a rough draft kind of for me. Uh, adjusts to ball well, takes good yak angles, just not a lot of juice. Um, tight hands on catches, keeps striding catches, hand, hands and routes. Uh, I guess he uses his hands and routes. Uh, physical at top of routes will take a hit over the middle. Late hands at catch point, uh, barks a little, which you like. Capable locker in big spots. Played some slosh, uh, played some slosh, played some slot, uh, played some X, played some Z, played some H back even, which is which is a positive in terms of his blocking. Uh, athletic for size, and I, I put adjust the ball again, which I listed twice. Uh, the weaknesses, I, I put route breaks are are meh which you guys know what meh means if you listen and listen to the show for a little while uh, not a big yak guy burst lateral quickness route running needs work overall especially on routes to the outside i noticed they need a lot of work when he's trying to stem guys outside uh injuries in 2016 2019 uh with knee and ankle injuries that kept him out for a large portion about the whole portion of those seasons acceleration uh leans before route breaks needs to attack db's leverage blind spots wasted steps and routes uh needs more juice and uh, drive phase when on back breaking routes uh stop steps aren't forceful doesn't get over his toes and breaks widen stem uh widens too much when releasing to the outside which i kind of said already um needs to diversify releases reaches for breaks would like to see him stack more uh needs to needs more lean in into corner uh cornerback in in drive phase uh or his or his stem so let's get into the plays of Cager. The grind is on, my people. We got we got four more reviews, including this one, and then that fifth show um, with Kyle Smith. We're gonna be predicting the 53 man roster. And like I said, the call in YouTube live show. I'm really looking forward to that. So uh, for the people who do listen, dedicated listeners, I definitely really appreciate the support on that on that because listen, if if I start getting a bunch of live views on YouTube and you guys really call in and react, maybe I'll start doing a show you know, on Tuesday, Wednesday to break down the film. And then maybe I'll do a show on Friday to get like a, like a, like a mini hour call in show or something like that. I, you know, if, if that's what you guys want, I get enough support. Um, maybe that's what I'll do. So definitely show your support on that. On that day. I would really appreciate it for sure. Uh, we have 28 plays. I just counted them. All right. So like I said, we'll run through them relatively quickly. Let me just pull it up and pause real quick. 
All right, first play. Um, Georgia ran a lot of these like delayed crossing routes. This is third and fourteen, uh, and he runs this delayed crossing route. Um, really nothing to it. Just it's just a, it's just a timing thing in terms of a delayed cross, and obviously they're running this crease concept up here. This guy's running the corner. Um, he's just a dump off option. Honestly, if nothing else is open, now maybe the quarterback should have tried to float this ball over um, this linebacker's head and, and hit him on the fifty yard line. This guy right here uh, on this crease concept. Actually, we'll call it a dagger because a crease concept kind of is a dagger. Uh, we have the outside running the running the uh, deep in the dig. You have the um, slot guy running a seam route or a post, depending on middle of the field open, middle of the field close. And then you have the um, crosser from the other side. That's dagger. If there were no crosser from this side, you just call that crease. But the dagger part needs to have the underneath crossing route. Um, that's at least how I label it. So he runs a delayed crosser. There's really not much to the delayed crosser. The good thing about this play and why I recorded it is the only, the, the reason that he that he ends up getting this first down. Like I said, he's he he catches the ball with 10 yards to go. But the reason he gets the first down right here is because of if you watch his angle where he's at the where he's at the uh, 42 yard line, he attacks the ball, which changes his angle instead of running flat right here. Where the where the corner or the linebacker, whatever he is, DB, let's just say, um, could take an angle to tackle him. He attacks the ball, which loops him around um, that linebacker and or that DB, and just gets him around him. Where, like I said, you could see where the linebacker gets to. He gets to you know the forty two yard line about even with him. And if he were to catch the ball here, maybe he can wrap him up. He most likely does. But because Cager um, attacks the ball like he should. And then he continues to loop it around a little bit and run to the sideline. Like I said, he has decent speed for a guy who's 6'5". Um, that got him that first down. So, again, it's the little stuff that matters where if he didn't attack, attack this ball like this, this guy most likely gets on an angle to tackle, even though it's a bad, not necessarily the best angle. But um, good job attacking the ball. Literally got them the first down and, and saved that drive um, with, uh, from Georgia. Curl top. Okay, we're going to see some good, some bad in some of his routes. Uh, I remember this one being uh, a little bit of both. So he, he, he like walks up on him. He uses like a, that I, I call that a, uh, a hop step where you hop off the same foot hop step and then a foot fire. Some people call, will simply call that like walking up on him, but it's, it's really, it's really a, a hop step into a foot fire. Um, and then he widens. And now the, the break right here, you, again, he's at the top, the break right here, is so he is my problem my problem with his break right here is that he's really lunging for for that contact so I, I get if he if he's a little bit closer to you lunge for that contact but you can see how he's really overextending his lower body you see how he's jumping into that break not slamming down you see how he's like it, he looks like a gazelle running full speed from a cheetah like he's not he's not slamming down into that break you want to be really forceful into the ground you don't want to jump because when you jump, your momentum's taking you obviously forward where in a break, you're obviously going forward, but you're going really, really down too at the same time. So it, it's, it's good and bad that he has the strength to obviously clearly push that guy away. You got to be a little bit careful, but, that, but pushing that guy away, the corner obviously makes room for the break, but you can see how, how the break's not very good in terms of his body being upright and sitting back going into his break. His second, his second stop step right here, you can see how he's leaning out of it already. We've talked about it before. Um, especially on like back breaking routes like that's that first and second step you really want to throw your body over your knees your chest you know over your toes um body really low um and you want to commit to those steps you don't want to lean out of those steps see how he's leaning out of it so his this now his momentum is trying to go backwards while he's trying to, trying to stop himself so his, his momentum and his body isn't working in conjunction with each other to stop so he's leaning out of his break a little bit too much there and it takes him one two three four, five steps to get out. You really, you really want to see, you really want to see four um, or three. So I should say, and, and he obviously catches the ball right here, but another issue I want to bring you to is the STEM. Now the STEM might work in college here. Um, now a good corner is going to stay square right here, which the corner does for the most part, a good corner stays square right here and just matches him and squeeze him to the sideline right here. So I don't really love this this stem especially for it's it doesn't this doesn't need to be an outbreaking route it's not like it's necessarily like a, I guess you can lay out you can, I guess it is a curl but the thing with this with this route is which is 
he's on the, well, he's not on the backside, but, um, but the problem with his route is he could have easily, if this guy was over committing outside, you know, stem him outside. If he's over coming outside, take his open hip, take his open hip, run down the field with him, lean into him before your break. Um, or even like do a push by, do a push by the top of your route and break back to the ball. You don't, you don't need to be this tight to the sideline because like I said, a good corner, even if he does open to the inside is, is going to just stack you over the top. So even, even if they don't squeeze you to the sideline, they're going to stack you over the top and then squeeze you to the sideline with their back to you. So he widens out a little bit too much right there. And then, like I said, he's reaching for that contact a little bit too much right there. Um, and he, and he doesn't, he doesn't commit to that second stop step. Uh, let's see next. Cager missed them. Good catch. Okay. Top of the screen. Again. So the step, the stem. One, you, you want to get rid of all that wasted movement at the line right there. You want to be more ready. That's, that's, that's too much time. The, the ball gets to the quarterback and he's barely moved. So I want to see that eliminated. Simple release. No, no moves at all. Just gets right to the outside. Again, you, you want to give him something, whether it be um, you know, a crossover, something. A little, a little stab inside. doesn't have to be necessarily even be a, a crossover. It's like an over-exaggerated step inside um, to stab over. Uh, to stab inside now he chops the arm down which i which i do like but it's still not really doing too much runs the curl stop adjustment to the ball he catches it but like i said if you're if which the corner is playing like that no man's land he's playing a little bit with outside leverage if he's going to open to the outside like that now now give him um now give him now give him a crossover um or a rocker where he where he would obviously um plant hard off the right to the left to the right and then and then he he decides obviously an open outside you're gonna you're gonna stem him inside he's in a he's in a probably speed turn to get back to you but he's gonna be chasing and then once he starts chasing a little bit boom break that break back to the ball and stop but you're trying to do an inward breaking route while taking while, while taking outside leverage so again in the nfl this is most likely stopped uh, the corner would find the ball right here in the NFL and most likely pick it. He does not, and Cager adjusts the ball nicely and, and makes the the, the uh, reception. So, and I'll, I'll show you a different angle of that. But again, good catch, good adjustment to the ball. Overall, that routes them. That route gets shut down in the NFL, at least any good corner. Um, but again, turns back to the ball, finds it. The he pushes off a little bit, but the corner does not see the ball. Um, he drops, and he good good job corralling the ball right here. Um, he, it's obviously hard to, to get his hands right on the ball you know, as he's coming down like this and fighting through that contact. So I like, you know, obviously it's not a hands catch, but I do like that he brings his whole body to the ball to, to bring it in, um, which he does. This is a catch. So good job with that. But the route stem overall and the route definitely need work on, on that play. Um, play number four doesn't sell. He's on the bottom right here. Okay, so he gets the catch, yes, on this play. My issue with this play is, um, and Florida's defense is is extremely odd on this play. Um, yeah, it's it's really it's it's it looks like a combo. It looks like like man man hole man man deep safety, and he might be man on this guy. That's that's what I'm assuming. Um, so Kager, obviously he stems towards this DB, the DB, by the way, is looking inside the whole time. So the DB does not play as well at all, but he sees the DB backing off. He looks inside. My problem with this is he, he, he doesn't have eyesight on DB this from, from literally right here into his break. So I want to see him sell this a little bit more. As you can see in full speed, he, and I'll show you in slow, slow motion, then full speed. Showing this, a, co a good corner is going to obviously have their eyes on you. They're going to take their two, three read steps. They're going to see the drop. They're going to look back at you. And once he sees his body language, they're going to they're going to choke up. They're they're going to they're going to come up field. And you can see that he his his route break even while running really slow is pretty bad. One, he's running slow and he overextends for it. You can see he hops into it again. Body completely upright. Doesn't commit to the second stop. Which on going this speed, he should he should go. He should literally just uh, throw one-two and be out of it. Just a quick one-two. Um, but he 
overextends. You know, he, he starts to stop at the 30 and drifts all the way back to the, the 32 and a half, 33 yard line, and then works back to the ball. So, I and I'll show you in full speed. You can see kind of how lazy this route is. I want to see a little bit more selling of, of that route in that drive phase. Now he catches the ball, et cetera, but um, overall it's, you know, and, and he, and he got open. So great. But, um, and maybe it's because he just knew he would be open on that play that he didn't really sell it. But I want to see, I want to see him sell that better. Route break, meh. Okay. So obviously bottom of the screen again, comes off the ball. Just a speed release, gets right into it, simple release. Now, again, this the, the receiver, the corner is already off of him, so there's really no reason to, to, to do this little, this little uh, this short stride foot fire because now he has time to break back on you. When he's playing this far off of you, just get inside. That, that's, that's how I would, you know, at least coach if I was a wide receivers coach, which I'm not. Um, but if he's this far off of you, just continue to press him. He's already, he's already afraid of getting beat deep. So keep running him deep because then he's going to keep running to create yourself for even more room. But when you start wasting these steps right here, what does he think you're going to do? You're going to, you're going to break either outside or inside. So he should obviously be more square. Um, and at least have the, you know, at this point start to break down a little bit, but he continues to run for way too many steps. Um, the break is, is not very good, especially considering that he slows down, he's slowing his body down. Um, I want to see this for this, this outside foot, his break foot be more explosive. Um, he kind of, again, he overextends a little bit. You want to see, instead of being forward, you want to see it more out, um, and creating pressure off that inset to go inside because you're going to see now his, his second is a uh, break foot drive foot. You see how rounded that drive foot is, especially when you broke down like that, you want to see that almost even with this, with this, with this, uh, break foot, especially when he broke down like he did. So that's why it's rounded upfield so again i'm now you could call me picky call me whatever you want but i'm just telling you college versus nfl how these routes need to be i mean you're breaking down like this for, for no reason in my opinion um and your break is not good especially when you already broke down you know it's it like i said it's two yards rounded when it should be pretty flat right there considering the the, the foot fire um now good job attacking the ball again i really like how he extends and tacks the ball he doesn't catch it with his body um, and he gets tackled. Oh, the one thing I want to cover too, before I bring up the next play, I forgot to bring these, these things up. Uh, the Jets are obviously looking into wide receivers too, uh, which we've thought, you know, Vince, Vincent Smith's going to be out six to eight weeks, which is like basically two months. Uh, Mims is still not on the field. And, and my issue with that is at first it was like, oh, a couple of days, you know, maybe a week they're being cautious. Now it's like, they're not really saying how, how long it's going to be, which is worrisome, especially with hamstring injuries, soft tissue are always worrisome. So he's not getting valuable time when he's already had a really shortened off season. So the jets are looking at bringing re receivers. They brought in Hogan. Uh, I'm literally going to watch Hogan film right after I record this. Um, so that's a decent depth option. Now they're looking into guys like Kevin white, Dante Moncrief, um, to be honest, Kevin White hasn't been healthy. I'm not interested in that at all. Dante Moncrief has had some drop issues. It's obviously concerning that 2019, he was signed to like a two year, $10 million contract or $9 million contracts with the Steelers. Um, they cut him after a couple of weeks because he kept dropping balls and wasn't uh, performing. And then he went to the Panthers and they cut him as well. But it's like, it's, it's kind of weird because with the Jaguars, you know, 2018, he had like six, 700 yards or 600 yards, whatever it was. So um, I think he'd be more interesting than a guy like Kevin White. Taylor Gabriel is a guy I would really like to sign out of all those guys. Um, you know, I think he's a, he's a solid option uh, in terms of getting open, you know, from the bears as well. A couple of years or, you know, I think last year I just think he wasn't resigned. So I think Taylor Gabriel is a better option. I think Paul Richardson's a better option than those guys. I think Demarius Thomas knowing the system is a better option than those guys. So I'd rather see those three over Moncrief and Kevin white, but I, I prefer Moncrief over Kevin white. And obviously people talk about trading for Juju trading for Allen Robinson. If that happens, it happens, but we're not going to really look into that too much. So uh, that's just an interesting little tidbit. Next play shallow wheel. I'm starting to see this more in college football, these shallow wheels, really long developing wheels, not from the same side of the field. And this is just a straight up coverage breakdown. As you can see, he's right here. Um, he's obviously tight split, reduced. Comes off of the ball. Shallow wheel. This DB who was playing off coverage in before is not going to get drafted, I'm going to assume, because his eyes just flash back and just tries to run deep to nothing. Like he's never going to catch his post. He's completely unaware. 
of Cager on this uh, shallow wheel, and he's absolutely wide open. And guess what? He catches the ball for a touchdown. There's really not much to that play. I'm not going to break that down. That's just as easy as it gets. Um, like I said, I don't want to spend too long on plays that don't matter. And I, I recorded it just because it's a touchdown. All right. So he's right here again. Um, another reduced split in the, in the red zone. He's he's the he's the true X right here, by himself by by his lonesome, and he runs this. Um, it could either be a snag or a jerk, uh, a, a snag like you're gonna you're gonna break inside and it just looks like a like a hitch or or a curl, but it's just a little bit inside. Um, and if it is a jerk route, he either has the option to sit, get back outside, or get inside. Uh, so if it's an option, I don't know. Um, be called a snack or a jerk. Again, I don't have their playbook in front of me, so I don't really know. Um, obviously gets inside on the snag, contact, breaks back to the ball. Now he knows that this guy is breaking to the outside. He's not covering him. He's breaking to the outside. He sees this inside guy, so he he breaks back outside. He's going to the oh, – he's trying to go where the quarterback is throwing the ball in the open spot of the field. So you see how he's trying to drift to the open part of that of that zone defense. Um, makes the catch again, nice hands catch, make sure he gets in the in, uh, over the goal line and now it's a touchdown. So good job adjusting to the, to the zone coverage right there and making sure he's in the, uh, in the open spot of the field foot fire bottom of the screen. Yeah, he does these a lot, these foot fires, which are, which are decent. Like they're not, they're not that bad. Again, in the NFL, um, you gotta be make, you gotta make sure at this point. Um, you're you're ready for contact. So the thing I would advise against is really dropping into your break like that. So I would advise him to to foot fire a little bit lower into the ground because this motion right here, again, he's at the bottom, that in the NFL could get you jammed, especially when the guy's square and close like that. So I don't know why this guy's playing close and then decides not to jam. That's that's pointless. You know how much I hate that. So but decent, you know, he 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 squares him up with that foot fire. So now he's threatening both ways. You can see he's a little bit to the outside and he foot fires, but he, but he, he, he almost like shuffles to the outside a little bit. He gets even. Stabs to the outside. Hold on. I'm getting a phone call. Let me pause it real quick. Okay. Stupid, uh, collect call or whatever it is. Um, let me go back to that play. It's just, I don't necessarily have a, uh, a job where you can't answer the phone, even if it's not necessarily a number you know. Um, okay, yeah, so the foot fire, again, I'm okay with it. He does it a little bit too much, um, but he obviously breaks inside and is wide open. Um, but the quarterback does not hit him. I, um, I don't know if he got sacked or not. I wasn't even looking at the quarterback at all. Foot fire chop. Let's see, bottom of the screen again. Again, foot fire. But this time, this time he closes his ground, though. You don't, you don't want to foot fire far away from a guy because you're not really threatening them. So you have to make sure you cover ground. So he covers his ground, foot fires, and you can see the, cor the, the corner reacts because he's, he's, he pressures him a little bit to the outside. And now we see how he splits and his, and his weight's on his heels now. That's going to be harder for him to break inside. Um, he breaks inside. And the good thing about the break inside that I, that I like is, one, he sinks into it. He's a little bit more ready for the, for the sink right there. It's, 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 it's very small, but he's a little bit more ready for that sink. Um, and as he sinks, he knows that the cornerback's oh shit arm is going to come out his inside arm. The inside arm comes out, crosses his face, swipes it away, which now he knocks him even farther backwards, looks back to the ball. Looks like a hands catch. You know, it's a tight hands catch. That, that, that was in that area where it's like, if, if it's like a little, if it's like right around the pecs, it's hard to decide, okay, under, uh, overhand or do I go underhand? It's, it's a little bit hard to, to for, for receivers. So as long as you catch, I'm fine with it. Um, and then takes a shot and is able to, to stay up. Next play, bottom of the screen again. Quite a few times he starts at the bottom. Okay, so the ball is overthrown right here. Um, again, another little bit of a... Um, there's really not too much to his route right here. Again, with, with the outside releases, he, he doesn't really – he has a tendency to just continue to work outside, like give a little bit of hesitation and work inside. But he'll never stem guys inside to get outside, um, which is, you know, 
oh, a little worrisome in terms of his his route running. I, he obviously changed that, but uh, too often he just allows guys to to get over top of him. Which again, in the NFL, if if this was played better by the DB, it's gonna be hard for him to get inside. But um, I like to see a little bit more at the line of scrimmage. But during the during the route stem, this is this is good though. Stems him outside. Um, I like the hand work here though. So as he goes across the DB's face, plants on the outside foot, right hand comes up. Um, with that right hand, he swipes, and then. As he swipes that, he knows the cornerback's going to speed turn and most likely throw out his right hand. He chops it down with the left. That hand work right there is nice. I definitely like that. Swipe, swipe. Swipe, swipe. Nice. Get inside of him. Run deep, run deep, run deep. And the quarterback overthrows it. He might have been able, uh, been able to catch this if it wasn't overthrown. Um, a little bit of contact from the corner as well on that on that play. Sorry, I keep looking at my phone. You ever, I don't know if, you know, guys, girl listeners, I'm, you ever have like the days where your wife, your girlfriend, your fiance just blowing up your phone with texts? It's like, just please, please leave me alone. <laughs> just nonstop. Um, okay. So top of the screen, I said, okay, release and catch. Again, foot fire. DB. Hey, good good job showing your hands already, but you don't ever get your hands on. So nothing really too impressive there. So again, let's see, let's see what he does here. So he just he just runs a nine. Um again, I would like to see just more work here. Um good DB, stay square, shuffles over top, squeezes him. So if he is if he is going to to this is more of like almost like a shuffle of release, which is look really similar to a foot fire, but it's more of lateral movements with a little bit of, of vertical movement, but it's more to square up a guy. So the guy's playing, look, it looks like heads up to outside, but he's just like a shuffle release to get outside. So I would like to see again, like, a, like another, like um, a rocker, like outside, inside, outside to get outside. So you really, really like you see the foot fire, but good DB, this doesn't necessarily beat him. Um, and he just, he's able to, to run past this guy and he's able to make the uh, a really, really nice catch. I don't have the – it's actually not a really, really nice catch. I remember having the other view of this, and he does have more room than it looks like he does along the sideline, and he, and he brings the ball in. So the, the release is okay with that like that, with that with shuffle release, um, but I would like to see a little bit more because at this point, it's it, he didn't really create a lot of um, distance for himself, but the cornerback is obviously just not that great. Um, so – while it's good in college, NFL, and, and honestly, I, I've been hearing he's been struggling a little bit in camps, had some drops, and hasn't been getting open too much. So um, I definitely like him more than uh, a guy in Greg Dortch last year. I, I think he's either going to be like the sixth, seventh receiver or a practice squad guy. That, that's what I think he, he will be. I think he could have easily been drafted um, sixth, seventh round, maybe the fifth round. But um, due to the injuries, and especially the guys with the injuries are going to have lack of medical checks. Um, it's going to uh, hurt these guys. So bottom of the screen, they run like I labeled it a, a switch hawk. So they switch their stems, then they run a hawk vertical out. Stems inside. Okay. So he does this like this 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 little like hop step, but uh, again, DBs in the NFL they're not going to get faked out by this by this hop step and just this look. They're going to be expecting something. They're most likely going to close ground on you right there and get hands on. To be completely honest, so while it kind of looks cool, it doesn't really do too much. Um, and, but it's it does slow him down. Now his break though, I, I want it to be more violent. You, you know, his pads are high right here as he hops into it, and again, you, like. It's, it's almost hard to explain, but that the inside foot right here, it he throws it down, but it's not really violent. And you see how he rounds his drive step again? So you have the break is the left foot right there. But you see how, his, how he really rounds that break, how, his, how it really comes across his body? Now his momentum's taking him up the field instead of out. Like you want that, you, you want to really sink and, and 
forcefully break off of that off of that that uh, that inside foot right there that break foot because that drive is really it's really rounded now obviously he gets past the guy quarterback throws it and i believe he catches this on the sideline yeah, he does catch us on the sideline. It's a good, good. He does a good tra- job track, uh, tracking the ball for sure. Um, good ball skills, but again, this this break, it's not terrible, but it's just not good. Um, but you also have to consider, you know, kind of combating myself. He is six five, so it's not it's not like he's you know six foot five eleven. So it's really not that terrible of a break. But I just want to see more violence in that in that break foot right there um, to lessen the round out of that of that drive that second drive step to get outside top reach a little speed out okay top of the screen is running again a speed out so the this this the difference between like outs speed outs is just that you don't have stop steps with with the speed outs it's just break break drive line which is the right foot break drive line. But again, his, his, this is really rounded Um, again with, with his breaks with, with that break step right there. And I, I, maybe I should call them stop steps or or, or I should call the the break steps, stop steps as well. Um, Because I'm, I, I usually I'll call it break steps, B R A K E and break B R E A K. So I should, I'll start saying stop steps versus break steps. So this break step, Um, he's, he's, he kind of lunges for it again, a little bit right here. It's not over exaggerated, but he does, he does lunge for it as you can see. And again, that rounds that drive step and now he's not even on he's not even in line with that drive step after the after that line step see again break drive line and you see how that line step is still coming up field so he starts the break at like the eight yard line and he takes it all the way past the to to like the the five and or the the four and a half whatever that is so um again i just want to see more uh power into those into those uh those break steps right there so he rounds it he does end up catching the ball. I'm still getting text and another one. Oh my god. <laughs> Nothing serious either. Just like basic regular stuff. It's just been a uh, nothing to worry about. It's been it's been ten years. we we've been there since high school, but my but my god. Um bottom of the screen. May route physical at top. Okay. Again, foot fire but not really threatening anybody like he's not manipulating with his hips um i would say he's almost a little maybe a little bit too wide just just a tiny bit uh too wide with that foot right there it's a little bit outside of his frame breaks outside i i do like like the the arm over right there to get past but it doesn't it, you know the the corner is able to land him with that offhand jam Again, his his routes to the outside need to work to me. There's t- there's too much just wasted movement, foot fires at the beginning, and then his release outside. There's not really a lot of manipulation of of the hips of of DBs. So, um, again, quarterback lands the, the offhand jam, goes into his break. Clear, he pushes off, makes the reception. So this is the physicality that this the top of the route that I like. I don't like the the stem right here really. You see how he really widens out. You you wanna ideally manipulate the hips a little bit. And even the, the corner jump splits too. So he's not unbalanced. So if anything, you if he is gonna foot fire, don't explode so wide. He explodes wide. If anything, explode through him. Like he's off balance, exp- like chop down this arm and explode through him to stack him and then cut back. But he, he widens too much. You can see he's at the, like the, the, the top of the numbers and he takes it like all the way to the sideline or, or pretty close to the sideline, like relatively quickly into the route. Now he does push off. He does make the reception, but again, good corner versus, you know, college DB from, from school in East Bumble, you know, I say the last word just in case there are kids. Sometimes I curse, sometimes I don't, but I don't like to go over over the top. All right. Toe tap, this is all I put. Okay, so uh, you have the, the tight inverted uh, slot formation. 
it was actually trips because you have these three guys, but uh, I call that Trey with the tight end if it's trips, but it's with the tight end. You call it like why, why, uh, why Trey? Because he's in line. Doesn't I don't really care about formations. I don't spend a lot of time on that. So breaks out, speed out. Not the worst break in the world, but he is not running at full speed as you can tell. Not a bad break though for a guy who's six five right here on the bottom again. Quarterback throws the ball. The quarterback throws the ball late. Obviously, you want, if if he's gonna throw that ball now or actually now. But they're running this mesh concept. He's he's you know the secondary option or third you know uh, the third option. Quarterback throws the ball again. Extends to the ball. Toe tap on the sideline. He has that ability to, to to win those type of balls. Obviously, it's wide open, so you should catch that ten out of ten times. But his length is intriguing. And again, for his size, if he cleans up his route breaks, he, he he's decent getting out of, in and out of route breaks for his size. So I think he's going to be a, uh, a practice squad type player for the Jets. Not like Greg Dortch. They just I think they just come when they put him on a practice squad and the Panthers or the Panthers sign him. I forget. I'm pretty sure the Panthers just signed him to the practice squad. So I think they, the Jets just cut him straight up. All right, bottom of the screen. The defense looks like cover three, but I don't know why this guy is so far inside, to be completely honest, because he has to match any vertical seven from one uh, pass two off to the to the middle of the field, and this guy would have any vertical threat from here. So I don't know what the hell they're doing, to be honest. Um, he blows past the corner, or not blows past the corner, the corner's playing, and then and that curled the flat. Um, the quarterback throws the ball in that, in that soft spot extends to the ball again he doesn't just let the ball come to him he you know he doesn't let, it hit, let him hit in the chest because one obviously you're not going to secure the catch and two that allows more time for these guys to catch up to you um and play the ball play the hands jar the ball loose if you if the ball hits you in the chest um so i like that he like pirouettes to the bar here again a lot of this is from all 22 type films so it's not from the close views um so i like that he extends to the ball catches it and now he tucks the ball because he knows contact. He knows contact is uh, contact is coming. You see a lot of guys will catch the ball and get the ball jar loose because they don't they don't tuck it away, um, or pull the ball away. Okay, so I have it from this view at least. Again, nice tight hands. Again, we talk about the tight hands. You don't want them wide and to clap the ball. The ball's gonna squirt through your hands. It's not gonna be as secure, um, and you're gonna drop the ball, or at least the ball will be more loose. So if a guy comes to hit you, it's gonna be it, it's gonna pop out. You want the ball nice and tight you know, fit, fit the, the nose of the ball right into your hands. And then you, uh, you, your hands start to absorb the ball um, towards the beginning of the part of the ball towards the, instead of the midpoint where you have more chance to absorb the ball into your hands, nice tight hands, catches the nose of the ball. And immediately he, he knows there's, he knows that he's going to get hit right here. Tucks the ball immediately, just rips it down. Boom. It's a really quick, quick, tight movement right there to tuck that ball, to pull it away, pull down, pull it away, tuck it, 17 we got 10 plays left 11 plays pull concept want to sell drive he's on the bottom so the poles the the outside uh you have the outside curl stop and the inside seam it's like more of like a vertical stretch concept and usually the quarterback will read inside seam to the outside the seam holds uh, the inside guy. So, again, this is the little. This is just a little thing. But do you see how he kind? He's kind of showing his like he's tipping his brake. Like now, shoulders are over his knees. He's selling the drive phase. But do you see how he kind of he, he comes up just a little bit too soon and like hops into the brake? It's not really a clean brake. Like I would really want to see him. Um, slam the inside foot down and then break off of that off of the outside foot so one be more committed to this don't start turning it away because now again you're not over your toes and it's a weird angle so you're not going to break off of it too much really drop into the step and then explode off your off your right foot and then work back to the ball immediately but he kind of he throws his foot where he's already leaning out of his break you see how he's leaning out of his break he's not really committing to that break and it takes a little bit upfield and then he works back to the ball he, he does body catch it's okay um breaks one tackle but Again, I suppose him to sell that a little bit more and, and make the break um, more violent. Cage your help QB TD. Top of the screen right here. 
Is it Thomas Reed? Oh, yeah. Okay, he is. Sorry. It looked like just number five, but it's not. Okay, so he just runs his crosser. Nobody stays with him. The quarterback should see this pretty early. <laughs> this guy's covered. This guy's a guy over top, and he's running wide open. So the quarterback definitely recognizes this late. He's looking up right at it, but he waits. To th- like, I don't know what he's doing, to be honest. Looks like he's dropping Reed in the middle the whole time. Looks life doesn't see it. Cager's giving the what the, you know what the hell in the back of the end zone like I'm freaking wide open. Why are you not throwing it to me? Why not throwing it to me? Why not throwing it to me? Literally jumping for the ball, jumping to get his attention. Quarterback rolls out. Now he now he sees this guy coming underneath of him. Now he has to work back to the ball to the front pylon. Except this is the open grass. He works to that open grass. Dives touchdown. Again, works that front pile in the only place, corrals the ball, cradles it, touchdown. And again, he should have been hit here, 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 here. Absolutely wide open, absolutely wide open. <laughs> and then finds the uh, finds the front pile on the open grass right there, touchdown. So good job helping your quarterback on the scramble drill. Reach for break. Bottom of the screen. Okay. Another stop, curl. So sells a dry face. Now is you know, you can see that his his shoulders are pretty much over his toes. Starts to come up right here. Now again, do you see how he's lunging for this break? You see you see what I'm talking about? It's not going down, it's lunging for it. So now your now your momentum is gonna go over your toes. It's just inevitable. You're not you're not gonna be able to stop like that. So you wanna see that more condensed. Less, less extension from the lower body. And again, you see how he's standing upright? His shoulders aren't over his knee. You, you, I'll show you really good receivers. Um, I'm trying to think. Like Crowder will do it a little bit. He's, he's, a, good, he's a solid route runner. Other than that, maybe Hogan will do it. I'm not sure um, how, how good he is at that. Like Mims, not yet. Perryman, not yet. Um, but you really, want, you really want to be completely sank into this. You, you want your hips to be lower. You want your chest to be right over your knees. Um, almost like you're trying to kiss your knee and he's, he just straight up lunges. He, he lunges and his body, his upper body straight up. And again, he, he, he slides, he likes his body slides because he's not, he, he's throwing his momentum so far over his toes. So he's, he's throwing his body so far over his toes that he slides because his momentum taking him so far forward. That should not happen if he was worked to break properly. So you want to see one stop, two stop, and then and then break out of it with the right. So one, two, and then now your right foot turns back to the ball. Your your left might like gather a little bit, but that's about it. So again, it's overextended. His body's upright, and he slides, gets his hands on, but that's he's not open in the NFL. There, he's not even open there. Same release, nice catch. Okay, so heads up to inside. Cornerbacks off. Again, too simple. Just a foot fire, release right outside. He does that a lot. That that's in the NFL. This is gonna get jammed. So I'll, I would see again more manipulation with both the head, the, the hips, um, more releases than just foot fires and, and shuffles. You you want to see the crossovers. You want to see uh, a bunch of different things. I have releases upon releases. You want to see skip releases and, and hop releases and, you know, sending guys inside to get outside or outside to inside to get outside. Like there's a bunch of stuff you could do. You've seen other receiver videos that I've done. Um, so too many of the, of the, of these foot fires, obviously starts from the top of the numbers and widens out, widens out, widens out again, good cornerbacks in the NFL are going to widen him out to the, to the corner right there. Um, now, he breaks back to the ball. Looks like he pushes off a little bit right there. Catches the ball on the sideline. Okay, I have this view too. Good. It's all all twenty two stuff. But breaks back to the ball. Finds it. Cradles it. Foot in. Catch. Twenty two. Cager back shoulder. Oh, there's a couple of good plays from this Notre Dame game for sure. This this game he balled out in my opinion for the for like the most part. Like obviously, he can clean up some stuff, but. Top of the screen, just straight vertical. The guy's playing far off. He just has it. He's just a take it vertical and a ridiculous catch. 
that's that's all it is. There, there's really nothing he could do here. Um, now maybe at the top he could have gave him like a, um, like a jerk stem, like stem inside. And eh, no, you don't really want to jerk stem on a vertical. So he, it's fine. Just just vertical. Gets past him, and you see some of his deep speed right here. Like his his once he gets his stride going, um, he has decent speed. And the catch is like again, you'll, you'll see right here. It's it's pretty damn good. Looks for the ball, high to low, and the good the the good the really good thing about this too is you see how his right hand's on the on the on the corner trying to trying to fend him off. He doesn't want to let, let him squeeze him, so he's he has the right hand on, and then the left comes over top. Transition. I, I really like when guys are using their hands like that. Like you don't want to just come off of this, not have your left hand on them, and now he's now he's getting into your body. So really good transition of the hands right there for sure. Uh, finds the ball, jumps, hands are wide, but it, he it hits him in the chest. So ideally, yeah, he does extend towards the ball right here and catch the ball, but obviously a tough position. He is able to bring it in um, along the sideline and, and, and catch it. So huge catch down the sideline. Next play is – literally this is the next play of the game from him. Um, top of the screen. Another like hop step skip release. So this is more of a hop step than a skip release. We kind of skips into the hop release. Stems him outside. A little bit of a crossover there, so a little bit better with the with the one two right there. Breaks inside, physical at the route break, and then again I'll show you the other view of this, and then makes a pretty ridiculous catch again. Tighter hand, tighter hands than the last time. A little bit, a little bit too wide. You see the ball kind of like it's it's not like corralled like immediately right there, but good extension to the ball. Boxes this guy out. It's going to be really hard for this guy to catch this ball with this guy that big and his arms that long and extending towards the ball. It's going to be really hard for that, that corner to make a play on that. And again, I like how he aggressively tucks the ball. It's not, it's, he doesn't leave the ball out there hanging out to dry. He, he immediately tucks the ball. So good job going up and getting extended toward, uh, to, the, to the ball. A little bit better of a release, a little bit better of a route right at the top, giving him a little bit more um, with his, with his um, break in terms of his footwork. A few plays later, right here, top of the screen. They go three by one. He's the X. Again, balled out this drive. Like this is this is the drive of his of his career. Corners playing off. Stems just straight vertical. Again, more manipulation maybe maybe needed, but if if they are um, king the blitz right here and they they know it's covers cover zero, um, he needs to obviously get into this into this fade um, with speed. So he gets into the fade with speed. Quarterback chucks it up. Again, looks like he has his right hand on. Transitions to the left to keep him away. Again, nice hands. I definitely like his like box out ability with his hands right here the last couple of plays. Extends to the ball. Tight hands again. Catches a little bit past the nose, so they could have been a little bit tighter. Again, I'm criticizing little stuff, but that's why I'm here. But good body control. You see the, the upper body, lower body disconnection right there, so he has good body control. Pushes the guy off a little bit, catches it, tucks it, feed and bounce, touchdown for Georgia. Five plays left. Not afraid of contact. Bottom of the screen. Okay, so this is a little. Bottom of the screen, runs a curl, stop. The, again, the route break could be better. If he is trying to go one, two, um, you really need to make sure it's not, it's not over here. So if you were, le if he was breaking, if he was starting his break off his left, he'd go left, right, left and break off that left foot. But when you're going right, it's a two-step break. So it needs to be, you really need to drop into that, into that, uh, stop step. And you can see how, again, he, he lunges for it. His leg is straight body upright. You want that again, that body being more leaned over that, and again, slam it down, don't reach for it. So, there's a little bit of a reach with the overextension from the from the uh, the stop step, and then he tries to get out of his break, which is fine because you it's it's really again with this, it's just it's just a quick pop, just one, two. But because he doesn't commit to that that first step, it takes him an extra you know two steps right there, and there's some dead time, but it's okay. 
quarterback throws the ball. And again, he knows that there's a corner breaking down on him, a safety breaking down on him, but he still extends to the ball. Again, no, no, he doesn't chest uh, catch over his chest. He's not afraid of, he doesn't alligator your arm or anything like that. Extends to it, looks upfield, tucks it. You can see him turn his helmet away, avoid head con- the, uh, the contact from the head, takes the hit. So I like that. I like his ability to, to obviously not be a, a, you know, like I like his ability to go over and catch the ball in traffic. I'll say that, but you know what I mean? Bottom of the screen, solid route. Okay. He doesn't get targeted right here, but this is better. There's a little bit more like, like suddenness right here. So uses a get even. He gets even right here. Shuffle, get even. Again, literally just his feet getting even. Now, if this foot came out first, the, the, if, he, if, if this was opposite, opposite, or no, I don't know if this is opposite. Actually, let me see something real quick. If you were to step hard to the left, with the, uh, step hard with that left foot to the outside and then release inside, I call it a stretch, but this is more of a get even into a shuffle release to get to stem him outside. The corner obviously reacts, hands go down, which is not a good job of the corner. Breaks again, maybe you can cover a little bit more ground to stem them. Like you, you like to see the the get even into the shuffle, but 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 like instead of just going completely lateral right here, you want to see him go up a little bit, a little bit more at an angle upfield to really get this, the corner to open his hips. Breaking, he now he breaks inside. My only criticism with this is I, th- I think he I think he bends a little bit too far inside. I like to see him hold his line a little bit more, but he does start to work up field. Let's see his break. Still a little bit, over, tiny, tiny bit overextended, but not too much. Um, so you can see the the break step, drive step. Again, it's a little rounded. But he's open, watching full speed. You can see that it's, it's, it, he gets to that relatively quickly, even though the even though the footwork at the top isn't the absolute best. He does he does snap out of that a little, like pretty quick for for again a guy who's six five. So solid route right there. I'll give him I'll give him a plus on that. He's not going to run routes routes as tight as Jamison Crowder because Jamison Crowder is carrying you know forty less pounds and uh, has you know more condensed um, body frame, which allows for quicker breaks. Okay, so again, when a guy is showing this, when he when he's playing this close to you, you always want to be ready for the hands. So I, I don't like his hands by his knees right here. Um, and if you are gonna look like look him off in the beginning, <coughs> make sure you're ready for that hand. He the corner obviously stab uh, stabs with the outside, and he's he's caught with it. So you got You got to be ready for that hand. So that that's definitely criticism. You don't want to get caught like that. Again, a good corner in the NFL. Stab, they're gonna get back to even, and then and then they took you out of the of the play for a second. So he a good corner would stab and then and then get right back to even, instead of kind of just leaving that arm out there. He's able to get inside. Stems to the outside. This guy's in man coverage on on uh, whoever this is right here for Georgia. Quarterback throws the ball low. Should be obviously over his head right here. This is, could be a, t- a touchdown, depending if there's a deep safety. Either. Okay, there's a deep safety. So puts the loan inside. Cater tracks the ball um, and makes a nice adjustment to that ball. So he's having some drops, drop, uh, drop issues with the Jets. It just hopefully working out some kinks and not playing football for a while and catching balls from uh, NFL quarterbacks, college quarterbacks. So hopefully just working out some kinks. I, I do think he could be a guy who could, you know, year one, two, be a red zone weapon for the Jets. And even if he was were, were to be a depth guy, you know, a uh, fourth or fifth guy for an undrafted guy, that's freaking awesome. So I started this late apparently. I said, wow, catch. I guess it really – okay, so there wasn't much I could get out of this route, I guess. I don't know what happened here, why I recorded this so late. But he's right here. Breaks to the outside with the guy inside. Looks like he pushes off a little bit, snaps it off, and makes a wow catch, as I label it. From his 11, right? Slides outside. The corner plays that pretty much as, as best as you can. Right hand on the hip, pulls himself through. Let the left hand does the left hand stab or swipe? No, he well, eh, kind of, he kind of swipes at it. 
he swipes out a little bit, so you'd like to see more stab, but tight hands, body control, tracks the ball right into his hands, catches it, again, tucks it. You don't, you don't want to leave it out there. If you're leaving it out there, this is when guys can, can punch through this little diamond of your arm and then rake the ball out. But you, you want to pull it, you know, obviously down and away from the guy. So even if he were to get his arm in there, you're pulling it away from him and you're pulling it tight into your body. So even if his arm is in there, you're pulling both of his arm and, and, your, uh, and the football into your body. So that's not going to go anywhere. You're going to get credit for the catch. Um, so good job. Last play of the cage review. Catching traffic. Okay, top of the screen, another like dig route. Again, so he's selling the drive phase. His shoulders come up too early for me. You see how he's he's running pretty vertical right here. Good cor- good corners are really gonna be tipped off by that. Now obviously if he's selling a double move, good job, but that's not what's happening. Um, so body to upright, and then you're gonna see the overextension again for that break. Right there. Again, it's the little stuff that matters for receivers. Overextension. You see how f- yeah, that's that is way too far. Stops at the his his uh his break step is at the fifty. And look how far it, that's two yards right there. He crosses over. That's that's too far. So again, body upright, overextends into it. His hips drop, but not a ton. So we want to see more hip drop. You want to see him slamming it to the ground. You want to see his shoulders over his more over his knee. Um, rounds it, but. He makes a catch in traffic again. Let's see. So, again, he has the physical capabilities. Or the route running needs a lot of work overall. Even though even the place he won, I showed you that he needs a lot of work. So, um, you know that's why he was a lower round guy because yeah, this, this stuff is great in the NFL, or the the, the contested catchability is great. But in the NFL, you're gonna have guys who can play the ball just as well, if not better, than you can. So, the the routes are really the the routes and the savviness and the route stems, things like that, how to manipulate hips is really important. So. Um, this might just be a big guy who can make some catches in college, never amounts to anything. Or if he does continue to build his route running game, um, maybe he could be, you know, a, a depth piece. I don't know if he's ever going to be a number one, two, three, but um, if he could be a number four, like I said, a guy who comes in the red zone for you, um, comes up for fades and things like that. I, I'm, I'm cool with it. I think he's going to be, I think he's going to be on a practice squad year one though. Tracks the ball, catches it with his chest. It's okay. It, you know, as I guess, as long as he catches it. This uh, DB, whoever he is, linebacker, drops his shoulder, but he's able to haul it in. Again, relatively short show, um, which is, I think, good for these guys. Uh, you'll get Wilson in a couple of days. Um, by the time I'm recording this, I don't even think Van Roten wasn't released yet. Uh, Anuasaur, on- Anwasar wasn't released. Uh, so now you're getting those two guys. You're getting uh, Cager. You're getting Wilson. You're getting Gore. Again, email me, Joe. Common spelling, J-O-E, period, blew it, B-L-E-W-E-T-T, at J-E-T-S-X, factor, F-A-C-T-O-R.com. And tell, let me know about the pickums if you guys want to do that. Like I said, I think it'd be cool. And please, please, please keep your eyes out for that YouTube show. I, I want to see people, even if you're not comment, even if you're not calling in, you don't like calling, you don't like your voice, you think you're going to stutter, which I stutter all the time, who cares, um, whatever. Comment on the YouTube, make a, make a YouTube profile and say, Hey, you know, whatever, uh, you suck. Tell me, tell me what, you know, I'm going to tell you why you're wrong on Perryman or explain to Perryman to me. I think you're bullshitting me, you know, like whatever I'm cool. I'm cool with that. You know, comment on the YouTube. Um, do you like mustard or, or ketchup on a hot dog? If you like ketchup, uh, I'm going to stop listening. You know, like I'm looking to have fun on that show for sure. So, so please uh, keep an eye out for that. Uh, I'll talk to you guys again, really, really soon. Again, pumping out these shows like crazy. Um, I, I'm, I'm putting out votes out there like, okay, would you guys rather see Chris Hogan or, or Gore next? People are like, what the hell? I'm like, listen, it's August. There's no preseason games, and I'm trying to put a film out there. Um, I want to do, I want to do Gore more than people um, like want me to. Like, I want to do it more than people the fans want because I think Gore is – listen, I'm not going crazy with Gore, but I think he's underrated to fans. I, I think if you watch him the first couple of weeks of the season when he was getting runs – on common downs, uh, he looked pretty good. Like he looked like you know a decent running back, but then his stats went down because they were running him on third and ones and fourth and ones and and goal line and in situations and games where they said to run the clock out, they were using him and, and resting Singletary. So his stats went way down because of that. But uh, that's gonna be an interesting review. So like I said, I'll see you guys soon. Thanks for listening. Drop those reviews. Drop those uh, uh, those subscriptions. Drop those those ratings. <laughs>
Mm-hmm.